Hi, I'm Sterre de Boer. I'm a postdoctoral researcher and medical doctor at the Alzheimer's Center Amsterdam. And today here at the AIC, I'm presenting my poster on the DIPA FTD study, which is a study aiming to provide an earlier diagnosis for patients with uh, sporadic forms of uh, FTD. As we know in this group particularly, the diagnosis can take very long as they don't have a family history that maybe make them come earlier to the clinic. The most difficult differential diagnosis to differentiate sporadic FTD is actually primary psychiatric disorders, as they can also present with late onset behavioral change. So in the DIPA FTD study, what we do is we ask all the psychiatrists and neurologists at four and five different sites to refer them to our study uh, when they have late onset behavioral change. So at baseline, uh, some patients already have a clear diagnosis of FTD, some of them a clear diagnosis of psychiatry. But there's also this very interesting group that don't really fill in any of those diagnostic categories, which we call ambiguous. And we hope that in this ambiguous group, we find these early sporadic FTD cases. And if we follow them up in time, then it actually becomes more clear. And then we can actually identify those and actually follow them over and, 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 or, and also um, collect information about these cases. So what I'm showing here is a preliminary result, whether only just cognitive tests and clinical bedside tools at baseline, if we cluster those using PCA analysis, if these can already help these clusters to predict the follow-up diagnosis of those ambiguous cases. So here you see what we included in our PCA analysis, which differentiates from the ACE cognitive tool to depression skills, uh, social cognition. Um, and basically, if we then plot the two principal components over here, what you can see nicely is that from the cases that already had a clear FTD diagnosis are in blue, they seem to be more on the right side, and then already clear psychiatry cases are in pink, they're more on the left side. And this ambiguous group that I was talking about really reflects this uncertainty that we have as clinicians because they're a bit all over the place. Now the clusters are one and two, which then seems that cluster one is more enriched with FTD cases and cluster two is more enriched with psychiatry cases. And then if we look at baseline, here you see the diagnosis at baseline that we gave with, I will start with the ambiguous group, which is interesting that the ambiguous group that falls in cluster one, which was the FTD cluster, actually remain ambiguous. So we really still don't really know. But the ambiguous cases that fall in cluster two, which was the psychiatry cluster, they actually, the majority goes into a psychiatry diagnosis at, at follow-up. So we believe that this data-driven approach can really, just based on clinical and neuropsychological tests, can maybe already predict what the follow-up diagnosis will be of this ambiguous group, and maybe that's where those sporadic early cases are. Thank you.